In this video, we're gonna talk about etiquette during a dance gig. So the do's and the don'ts while you're at an event or a show. And I'm also gonna be sharing with you some helpful tips for a fun and easy going dance gig experience. What's up, beautiful? My name is Shannon, and this channel is all about sharing practical tips and hacks for dancers and performers. Now, I've worked and performed for over 30 different dance companies and entertainment agencies around Los Angeles, so if it's your first time doing a dance gig and you wanna know what you should and shouldn't do at an event, then keep on watching. Now, the do's and don'ts can be different from company to company, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same. So, let's start with the first one and the most important point, be on time. Now usually when you get the information of the event, you're gonna get your show time and you're gonna get your call time. So you wanna look at the call time and you wanna be at least 10 to 15 minutes earlier than your designated call time. So if your call time is at 2 p.m., you wanna at least be there by 1.45. You wanna have a little bit of a buffer time in case you have anything like traffic or maybe you can't find parking or maybe the parking area is really far from the dressing area. Any situations like that, you wanna at least give yourself some nice buffer time. Number two, dress the part. So you wanna make sure you look professional and you're also following company guidelines. So let's say it's a corporate event and your company tells you you need to wear an all black cocktail attire, make sure you follow those directions to a T, all right? Also, you want to make sure you're fully hair and makeup ready. So looking professional the minute you go in and as well as coming out of the event. Another helpful tip for you is make sure you carry all of your belongings in a rolling carry-on luggage. This way you can carry all of your belongings in one bag and look as minimal and professional as possible. So think flight attendant, okay, not bag lady. Number three, be kind, be pleasant, smile, don't be a butthole. Not just being kind to the clients or the guests, but we wanna make sure we're pleasant to everyone at the event. So everyone from the valet people, to the servers, to the photographers, to the people at the front desk, you're all in it together and you want to make sure everyone has a pleasant experience as much as possible. Again, know that you are representing your company from the minute you set foot to the event until you leave. Number four, communicate, communicate, communicate. This is huge. So let's say you're going to be late for the gig. Make sure you give your on-site manager a text or a call. Let them know what's up. Give them your ETA keep them in the loop just so that they have peace of mind and they can make adjustments accordingly. On that note, make sure you have the phone number of your on-site manager or point of contact. Number five, do not bring guests with you. Leave your grandma at home, leave your boyfriend at home, leave your dog at home, unless it's cool with your director, but make sure you ask permission first if you do wanna bring anybody, because you just never know what kind of an event it is, especially if it's a corporate event, they're not gonna allow your mom to come and watch you while you're performing. That's just, it's a private event. I've done gigs when other dancers would bring their friends to the event and you know sometimes it's okay and then sometimes it's not okay because it's a private event. So make sure you know what's up before you plan on bringing any guests with you. Number six, come prepared. What does that mean? Coming prepared means knowing your choreo ahead of time, okay? Not struggling trying to remember the choreography right before you go on stage. There have been too many times when dancers would show up to an event not knowing their choreo. That includes me, I've done that before. Don't do that. Come with your A-game, make a good impression, know your choreo. You'll be less stressed out, you'll be more confident, and you can actually focus on having fun and entertaining the guests. Also make sure you have all of your costumes, your shoes, your props. Here's another tip for you. So as soon as you get all of the information for the event, make sure you go down the list of everything you need to get. The other thing that's helpful is making a checklist of whatever you need to pack for the event. 
if you can, pack the night before. That way you have plenty of time in case you're missing anything, you know you can go and grab whatever it is that you're missing. Another tip for you is as soon as you get to the event, make sure you go and check the surface of the floor you're going to be dancing on. Just so that you know in case it's slippery, in case it's sticky, in case there's broken glass, or maybe it's uneven, that way you know ahead of time and it's not gonna be a surprise for you once you get on stage and you have to perform. And one more tip, and this is more of a reminder because most of us dancers who are in the gigging scene, we forget to warm up. Why? Because we're too busy getting ready and maybe there's just not enough time. We didn't set aside enough time to warm up. Save yourself the body soreness the day after. Warm up before you perform. Number seven, no alcohol, no smoking, and no drugs. Now I will say that each company is different, okay? So some companies will let you have a glass or two. Some companies will just say, you can drink, just don't get crunk. And some companies are an absolute no-no, all right? So make sure you check in with your company guidelines. Just know again that you're being hired and you're representing a company. So you wanna be your best and you wanna make decisions that's going to make your company look it's best. Number eight, do not eat the food at the event unless it is offered by the client. This has happened many times where dancers will just assume that the food that is being served is for them as well. And sometimes it is, but make sure you check in with your manager first. Now, some companies will state in their contracts that the client has to provide food for the performer and some companies don't have that. So again, don't just assume and go to the buffet line and start piling on your plate. Make sure you check in with your company manager first. And on that note, number nine, do not eat in your costume, especially if the costumes don't belong to you and they belong to the company. Now, obviously if it's your costume, you can do whatever you want, right? But you wanna be smart about it. Sometimes I drop food, like that's just what happens. I tend to get in food accidents all the time and then I start staining. So I just don't even bother. I make sure that I'm covered or I take off my costume ahead of time before I I eat. Number 10, and this is a very important one, do not poach clients. What does that mean? Don't steal clients, especially if you're working under a company, right? Say a client comes up to you and says, oh wow, I wanna hire you guys again. You know, what's your information? You wanna make sure you direct those clients to the manager or make sure if you have a business card of that company that you give them that business card. Don't take that client for yourself because the reality is the only reason why you're at the event is because the company hired you to be there at the event. It's not your client. Make sure you represent the company that you're working for. This is common decency and good practice to do this because if you start stealing clients clients, ah, oh, you're just tainting your reputation if you do that. We're all artists, we're all performers, we're all in the same boat. We need to help each other out and not take from each other, okay? So if you're being hired by a company, that company should be your family. You're representing that company. You're a family member of that company. Don't steal from your family. Before we move on to the next one, let me know if you're getting value out of this and feel free to click the like button. Number 11, do not complain in public. Keep your negative opinions to yourself because you never know who's around you listening in. And again, you wanna make it a pleasant experience, not just for yourself, but for everyone around you. So if you have anything negative to say, just don't say it at all. Keep your opinions to yourself, don't complain in public. If it's your first time doing gigs and maybe most of the time you've just been training in a studio, just know you have to be able to be flexible and you have to be able to adapt to the situation because the reality of events and gigs is that you never know what could happen. The timeline could change or maybe somebody forgets something or maybe there's no floor and it starts raining. You just never know what could happen at an event and it is key to make sure you're able to be flexible and adapt in those kinds of situations. So it's a different mentality than going into the studio or maybe 
performing at you know a show where you know you know show time is this call time is this you know exactly what's going to happen so i can't stress this enough make sure you're as flexible as you can be when you're walking into events number 12 direct all of your questions to your on-site manager or the person who's in charge of the gig okay if you have any questions don't go to the client don't go to the guest make sure you go straight to your on-site manager if a client or a guest comes up to you and you don't know the answer just kindly tell them hey you know i'm not quite sure but let me bring you to someone who may know the answer all right here's another tip for you if you have an on-site manager at the gig it really really is helpful if you can just help them with anything that you're able to say like packing up the costumes or you know putting things in piles it really helps if you go above and beyond your job description it just makes things a lot more helpful and it makes you more valuable as a performer number 13 leave the venue cleaner than when you found it when clients and guests see that you actually leave the place cleaner than when you found it that makes a huge impression on them and they remember that clients really pay attention to that and they really appreciate that and so does your company director number 14 ask permission first before you take photos or videos and post on social media especially if the event is a private event or maybe if it's a celebrity event and they don't want people taking photos and stuff like that Check in with your on-site manager first before you post on social media. Number 15 and the most important one on the list, come with high energy. You are there to entertain, so leave your baggage at the door. People look up to you and will feed off of your energy, so you need to go above and beyond to create that vibe and hold it there. And those are pretty much the main things to keep in mind while you're working at an event. Now, I would love to know if you have any do's and don'ts in case I left anything out, so feel free to write down in the comments. I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, I do post videos like these every week, so if you wanna get notified of the latest video updates, go ahead and tap, tap, tap that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, beautiful, happy gigging, and keep dancing, yeah.